Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bums Breakdown. Today we're doing the Orange County preview, the second time we play them this season. As always, joined by Dylan, but we'll go over first the last game versus Colorado Springs. Another 2-0 win, um, so two victories out of two versus Colorado, seven goals scored and zero against, so uh, not too bad there. But Dylan, what did you make of that last game? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. It's ironically enough, I think uh, it's actually a better performance than the five nil was, even though the scoreline, you know, might not reflect that. Uh, maybe not a better performance, but um, a more complete performance. We actually had to play eleven men the whole time. Um, but yeah, you know, we gave up a couple good chances. But uh, Koke, I mean, maybe his best game for us he's had in, in the year and a half he's been here. Um, yeah, it was just nice to be back at home, well, back in uh, back in the stands. Even though it was probably the most uncomfortable single game I've ever experienced at Torero, temperature wise. Yeah, it was the the sun. I mean, I know it was a little bit cloudy early in the day, but when that sun came out, it was uh, it was pretty pretty um, harsh at times. But yeah, I think the the victory, the kind of the performance in the second game, um, although the scoreline wasn't as big, I think yeah, definitely a, a more. I can't even say convincing, but kind of a, a good all round performance. Defensively, obviously, had a lot more to do um, in that last game as well. And obviously, Coke, like you said, there probably, I, I would say, probably his best game for us so far this season. I'm uh, I'm actually shocked he didn't get in the team the week this week, but I know Paul Blanchett did actually get that. Um, although he's in there for the save of the week too, Blanchett. And uh, basically, he's in the team in the. Say in for the save of the week, even though he nearly got a lob from the halfway line. So I don't know about that. That's a bit of a, a dubious one there. Um, but Dylan, obviously, we've had some new signings as well. Obviously, Guzman came in. Uh, we have Mushka Lucia. Um, and then we had another one. It was um, the Michael. It's the last net uh, the, on the jersey bike. I can't really pronounce his last name. I don't can't remember it off the top of my head here. Um, what do you make of those guys, though, in the last game? Uh, well, first of all, I have to say, I hadn't checked the team of the week this week. So, Did Koke make the bench even? Didn't No, San Diego Loyal That's... plays in the lineup or the bench. So... Um... I okay. I've jokingly said this a few times, and now I'm gonna unjokingly say this. There's like a bias against the Western teams. They never. I feel like the team of the week is always like very heavy East Coastern teams. Anyway, that's my hill. Um, but yeah, so the new guys. Uh, Michael, I feel like didn't get to play too much. Um, and that you know, I think his last name's Chilaka, but I'm not gonna even pretend that I know that I'm pronouncing that right. So, um, he wears Michael on the back of his shirt. So the same way I'm gonna I call Ebby Ebby. Or I call, uh, you know, whoever, uh, whatever they, name they put on the back of their shirt is what I'm going to call them. So we'll call him Michael. Um, but yeah, I thought he looked okay. Didn't see too much of him. Guzman, um, truth be told, I feel like I didn't notice him much. Uh, except for one, he had one moment near the end of the first half that made me a little nervous. But I feel like I didn't really notice him much. And for me, my personal belief when it comes to defenders is if you're not noticing them during a game, that means they're doing their job like quite well. And so, for me, the fact that I barely noticed him all game means he had a really solid game. Um, and we kept a clean sheet. So, you know, what is there to say about that? Um, and then as far as Mushaglusa or Matiti, I guess is his middle name he wears on the back of his shirt, uh, he looks great. He's clearly got, like, some vertical creative dribbling that I, I don't know that anyone else on the team really has, and he's, he's quick, too. Uh, and it seems like he and Damas already maybe have the startings of a partnership, too. I... Um, I know that they connected for the goal, and that's obvious, but there were a couple of times where they they had good depth between each other. Like, they were making runs that corresponded with each other well to stretch the defense. And so for guys who have just started playing together, that's obviously good to see. So um, I wonder if there's something there. I'd like to see more of that. Uh, but, yeah, I, I really don't think anybody had a bad performance for the new guys. Yeah, I will say, obviously, I mean, right now, the, the Toomey Conway partnership seems to be kind of the, the favoured one up top. But I mean, if you've got, obviously, uh, Mushka Lucia and uh, Damaskin off the bench, you kind of replace those two guys and kind of not losing any talent there. Um, I think that's kind of good to see. But I'd be interested to see if um, kind of the, the Damas Mushka Lucia partnership kind of overtakes the Toomey Conway one. But obviously, we'll see. And um, I said, I'm just glad they're both kind of playing well already. And obviously, great to see Darmus get back on the score sheet. I think um, he played very well, obviously, when he came on. His kind of uh, work rate was good to see. I think there was one time when he was like falling down on the floor and kept going, like he was almost crawling after the ball. So um, he looked very happy after the goal as well. So uh, I'm, uh, I know, obviously, he's not been, he's had kind of a tough time so far this season, but um, good to see him kind of finishing the game with a smile on his face as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, Guzman did very well at the back. Um, and it's Michael Chalaka. Um, 
correction there. Uh, but yeah, he looked okay when he came on. I know there was one instance where I think he um, either misplaced a pass or missed a ball and kind of there was an opportunity for them. Um, but at the end of the day, kind of the, I mean, first or second game, obviously, you know, a lot of these guys played in that Dortmund game. Um, but they're hopefully they kind of slot them well. And obviously with uh, Elijah out now um, for a little bit, we don't know how much longer for. Um, and losing Carl Adams, we do need kind of those defensive reinforcements. Although I will say they're they're a certain type of defender. I wouldn't say they're they're all kind of the the guys we've got apart from Stoneman are all kind of out and out centre backs. More so kind of I would say ball playing centre backs. It could almost be a full back. Um, whereas like Stoneman and Kyle Adams are more so kind of the the no nonsense kind of your typical centre back, big kind of not too great on the ball, but a strong um, and can win a challenge in the air. So we'll see how that kind of plays out. Um, I know Stoneman went down, came off come the end. So without Stoneman, um, I don't. F- I, honestly, I don't love Stoneman, but without him in that middle, kind of, of those three, um, I do think we miss kind of a lot of strength and kind of solidity there um, at times as well. Um, but obviously up to fourth in the Western Conference now, Dylan, I know we've kind of spoken about kind of uh, where we've been in the league this season. Um, do you, are you happy with where we are currently kind of going into the rest of the season? I think it would be hard not to be. Um, I mean, obviously we've had some struggles that we've talked about plenty of times throughout the season, but... I, you know, we're sitting fourth. We've got a game in hand, if not two, on a couple of teams. Um, our goal difference is doing okay. That 5 nothing in Colorado definitely helps. But, um, yeah, I mean, if we win our games in hand, which obviously is easier said than done, we could be right thereabouts pushing for the top of the West. So I think um, we have done a good job setting the table for ourselves for this stretch of home games which I think at the end of the day was really probably what you would have asked for at the start of the season. So I'm not like jumping to the moon excited about it, but yeah, I'm feeling pretty, I'm feeling better than I was a few weeks ago and, you know, winning three games in a row will do that for you. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. I, I think this one coming up, the OC one is, will be a, a very big game as far as kind of how our season goes. Uh, obviously OC if I'm right now, I think, if they, I know they've got two more games over us, but if they win this game, they draw level with us on points, which is um, obviously a big change from kind of early on in the season. We play them first, so um, I do. I don't wouldn't say it's a make or break game, but we definitely win this game here. We are kind of solidifying our chance to kind of get a home playoff game. We we'll lose this one, and I think kind of the progress in those last three games um, kind of goes to waste a little bit, in my opinion. And obviously, I know we've touched on the Dortmund game a little bit. Um, what did you? I, I guess it's too much to kind of say. What did you make of the game? The game itself, obviously, a six 0 loss. Um, I wouldn't say performance wise, really too much to take from that. Um, seeing that it was somewhat of a friendly game, but um, kind of what are your thoughts and the kind of I guess the game as a whole. Yeah. So yeah, the Dortmund game was a lot of fun. Um, I can't say I was paying that close of attention. Um, I it was more of an occasion, you know. Um, I was having a lot of fun. I had some friends in town. We went to the tailgate beforehand had a few beers and whatnot. Um, But yeah, I, it was a lot of fun. I, the turnout in the supporter section was like fantastic. The noise was great and the energy was a lot of fun to be a part of. Um, I had to go take a breather a couple times because I was just struggling to keep up. But um, I think despite the six nil scoreline, I think that flatters Dortmund. And I think that the most telling sign of that is that even Dortmund fans would probably like agree with that sentiment. San Diego created chances. I think we had like 20 shots or something like that in the game. Granted, only like five of them were on target and we didn't score, but um, we could and probably should have scored once or twice. Uh, and the second half, I think is we scored, we conceded four goals in the second half was like a totally rotated 11. Um, I think if we play, <clears throat> excuse me, the way, if we play the way we did against Dortmund in the first half, we can beat any team in the USL. That was like some like tight, zippy football. Like it was fun to watch. Um, so yeah, I I came away impressed, and I saw a few different you know uh, German like soccer accounts like talking about um, they were impressed by our pressing game, and they talked about how I remember seeing one talking about how they had the way we use Koke. They're like, oh, I've been seeing this evolution in the game coming, you know, and like it's finally here and. I'm, it's impressive to see it in America, you know? And so like, I think it's sometimes it's, <clears throat> it's easy to just think like, Oh, just a USL team. But like this occasion helped us to remember that like, we do have this place in world football and like, while we're not, I mean, we are the most massive team in the world, but while we're not the biggest team in the world, uh, 
it just like I don't know. It, it made me feel really a lot of pride in San Diego Loyal, um, and just no matter what happens in the future, uh, we will always have that memory. And so I uh, big big shout out to like you know Ricardo and Andrew and everybody in the Loyal front office and Weston of course got to give him a shout out and and especially to Bruce at Dortmund as well because I don't know if y'all have been listening to like two balls and a mic lately, but they um, did mention that Dortmund it came out, had a choice of teams they could have played on this tour that included MLS clubs and other European clubs. And they specifically said, no, I want to, I want to play the local team because you know, that's a big thing in Germany, but also for them, Dortmund specifically have a very working class local ethos. And so I just have so much respect for that. Um, the fact that they sought it out and saw it through and it was a great time for everybody. And I hope they really enjoyed their time in San Diego. Yeah, I think obviously the, the 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 occasion was more so that the the kind of the main event there for us, and the fact we got to play a team like Dortmund, um, I think it's incredible. And obviously there was a a few smaller like English teams came over and played USL sides, um, and the likes of kind of Louis that played. Um, I think it was like Kaiserslautern. I think um, San Antonio played against Sunderland as well. So. Um, I mean, for us to play a team like Dortmund also shows where we kind of are, I guess, and we're kind of growing. Um, and just to get kind of lo a lot more eyes on us as far as kind of the promotion of the game, um, as well as kind of great to see, again, to play in a bigger stadium as well. Um, I think ended up being around 12,000 kind of people there as well. So uh, obviously uh, will definitely help us in the long run as far as kind of grow growing San Diego Loyal. Um, but then moving on to kind of the, the main part of today's episode, it is obviously the Orange County preview. Um, we've got the lineup on the screen right now, but we'll kind of go through how they played so far this season. So right now they're sitting sixth in the Western Conference. Um, after a pretty poor start, to be fair, sacking their manager, Richard Chaplow, early on. They are currently on nine wins, four draws, and nine losses. Um, and then a, a pretty even home and away record, kind of a, there isn't kind of a clear... They're a lot better at home or a lot better away. Uh, six wins in the last seven games. And then uh, also 27 goals for and 30 against there. So, uh, again, they're a big turnaround there for OC. I mean, Dylan, I mean, kind of watching how OC have done so far this season. Um, I mean, I always say kind of do they deserve to be where they are. But kind of what do you make of the turnaround they've had so far this season? Yeah, it's been impressive. And, you know, it's funny because it, in 2021, they had a pretty rough start fired their head coach and hired Richard Chaplow and they went on a run to win the championship. And now they've fired their head coach and are going on a run. And I'm not saying history is going to repeat itself, but it is kind of funny sometimes how those things happen. Um, yeah, this is probably, I would say our biggest game in a while. Um, I know though we said that about both of those Colorado Springs games, but that's kind of the nature of the beast here in the USL, especially in the West where every team bar Vegas, I guess are like genuine playoff contenders um there's no easy games and uh orange county are probably in the best form of anybody in the usl i haven't looked to back that up so um feel free to tell me in the comments if i'm wrong about that but uh yeah it's a huge game and you know above all that it's uh it's a local rivalry um i like to beat oc and i don't like to lose to oc so um yeah i hear they're bringing down a big couple bus or two full of people they claim um We'll see if those people actually materialize in Torero Stadium or not. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good game. Yeah, I mean, if I'm from Orange County, I wouldn't mind a little uh, bus trip down to San Diego. I don't know about watching yeah, the game itself, though. Get out uh, of Irvine. <laughs> but, yeah, obviously, uh, this is now, I mean, would you would you say this is our biggest rivalry or would you still say Phoenix is the biggest one? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I would say in the stands... This might be a bigger rivalry just because, like, I don't know. I don't really, like, think about Phoenix fans. When we're there, we're, like, sat on the other end of the stadium. Like, I guess it's kind of polarizing being there with them. But, like, I don't know. You go to Orange County and there's just, like, you walk in there and it's like, oh, it's a beautiful stadium in the middle of a nice park. It's like, and it's our fucking house, you know, excuse my language. And so there's just something to that that's, like, a lot of fun. But on the field, it does seem like the players hate Phoenix which, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but I can resonate with that. So, um, I don't know. It kind of depends how you look at it. But I definitely think that the nature of rivalries in American sports is that they're the most real and alive when both teams are good. It's not quite the same as it is, like, in, uh, in other countries where, like, the Derby is always a big deal no matter what. 
Like, don't get me wrong, rivalries always matter, but, like, they really only matter matter when both teams are good. And so, you know, Phoenix had a rough year last year. I'm okay with that. Phoenix are not doing as good as they probably are hoping to be this year. Um, but Orange County are flying. So the fact that both teams are in good form, both won their last three, I think, uh, like I said, just kind of in American sports, I feel like when both teams are good, it heats up the rivalry. So uh, I guess that's a long-winded way of saying right now it kind of does feel like Orange <laughs> County would be the bigger rival. Yeah, it's, I think it's one of those two. I, I always feel like in, uh, I guess, as an outsider looking into American sports, I do feel a lot of kind of soccer rivalries um, seem very kind of... Um, almost uh, created by the clubs itself without kind of the fans kind of very um i'm trying to think of the word here i'm, I'm kind of manufactured yeah that i mean yeah manufactured not kind of um just naturally kind of created like they kind of are but i think that's more so down to kind of the history of the game i mean you look at kind of clubs in europe and england um those teams have been around for kind of 50 100 years whatever and obviously the rivalry stem back really far um here i mean you've kind of got five ten year te- ten year old teams so um, the rivalries, the derbies create more of an atmosphere. The fans kind of get more excited for it. And uh, again, maybe I don't love the manufacturing of it, but I think kind of the OC and Phoenix ones um, definitely do feel like derby rivalry games. Um, but kind of looking through the OC team here, obviously they had a switch goalkeeper. Um, I know Cody Cropper was their goalkeeper, I think for like the first 13 games. Um, Shotless came in for the last nine. He's actually had six clean sheets um, in nine games. So uh, pretty good kind of turnout for him there. Uh, right back here, I think it's Owen Lamb. Uh, then Nakeem and Powell center back. Doman, I think it's Doman or, or Dog, Dog Doggy Man um, at left back. And then we've got Partida, kind of the holding midfield there, uh, Kasipel and Kyle Scott, and then uh, the Oloski brothers. They are brothers, aren't they? They are, yes. Okay. And I, they're I, from San Diego. Okay, okay. So the Oloski mm-hmm. boys there, and then uh, Big Mark but McNulty um, up top, the Scottish striker. I know McNulty had a bit of a tough start. Um, I think he's doing a bit better now, um, but obviously we all know um, where the goals come from in this team, and it's... Uh, Big Milan Oloski. I think he's what he's had ten goals so far this season, um, and him and Carl Scott are the joint assist leaders with three each as well. So I know Carl Scott, another one, uh, another English guy. Um, I think he actually came through the Chelsea youth setup as well. Um, I don't think he's had a great start to his time in the US, but I know obviously he's been improving a bit more recently. Um, and then kind of going on Oloski against one, once more uh, team high sixty one shots from himself. Um, and the second player with the most high shots in OC only has 21, so 40 more shots in the second guy there. So uh, we all know where the uh, the main danger will come from there. But Dylan, kind of watching OC, um, kind of how they're playing, kind of how they've been so far this season, kind of anyone else stand out for you? Obviously the same kind of key players, and like how do they play really? Um, well, truth be, truth be told, I haven't watched too much of them um, since they hired the new coach. But it does seem like the ethos maybe hasn't changed that much, which is kind of a defense-first um, approach. I saw some quotes from Milan Oloski talking about how they had to accept that they were like going to suffer sometimes during games, but like they will have chances to win them if they do that successfully. And so, you know, that's the kind of thing that teams talk about when they're like trying to graft defensively. I feel like right. Um, so that coupled with just I feel like that's how they used to play. So it would be hard to do an all out switch mid season. I think they're probably still going to have a bit of a, especially on the road, a bit of a defense first approach, Um, but they're great on the counter. And um, as far as the way they score goals, I mean, like you said, Milan Oloski leads with 10 goals. He's one of the league leaders. Um, He can score all kinds of goals, but I think if you asked him what his favorite was, or you just watched all of the goals he scored, you could see that he really loves a shot from around the top of the box. Um, so that creates space for other people because when he gets the ball in and around the top of the box or gets space in and around the top of the box, um, you know, defenses start to panic. So definitely look for him floating around in those areas, even though he's ostensibly playing left midfield, left wing, whatever you want to call it, um, when they're in their defensive shape, um, he definitely will drift centrally um, into the spaces that he can find there. Yeah, I mean, that's the main thing. Obviously, you've got to play like Oloski, I think. I wouldn't say it's tough to compare. I mean, I think if you put Oloski in our team, would he would he be the best player on our team? Um, 
I don't know that I would say he's like the technically most gifted player on our team, but he'd probably be the best goal scorer on our team for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Uh, I mean, obviously, as far as the USL goes, I mean, I, uh, I'm, su- I'm surprised he's still in the USL right now. Obviously, he's kind of been dominating for the past few years. Um, but maybe USL's his level, and he kind of excels there. Um, but I definitely think he could kind of uh, go even further, even kind of uh, abroad, or maybe kind of a, a lower MLS team here or there. Um, as far as their shape goes, I mean, pretty much in attack, they kind of go more of a 4-3-3. Uh, the Oloski ball is kind of tucking a little bit and help with McNulty up top. And then defensively, I know you touched on a little bit as far as kind of they sit in a bit and play very, I wouldn't say very defensive, but kind of do sit in, kind of soak up the pressure a bit more in like a, a 4-1-4-1. Um, McNulty kind of just leading the line and kind of, pressing a little bit there so again we've been sitting in a bit recently as well so uh, we'll see kind of which team decides to sit in a bit and kind of soak up the pressure for most of the game I'd imagine we'll kind of take turns a little bit um, but as always I think kind of the whoever gets that first goal and kind of the early goal um, will probably hopefully stay on top um, if it is a loyal come the end and then obviously moving into uh, to pretty much our lineup here I mean I know um, going into last week we were what one player off getting it correct so uh we are getting somewhat closer, um, but and also we are pretty much going with um, a similar lineup from the past few weeks as well. And I know obviously we'll bring up our lineup right now, um, but we pretty much gone the same exactly the same lineup as the last week. I know we've not really discussed this too much, but do you think right now anyone else gets into this team at the players who are fit? Obviously, Moon's out right now. Elijah is somewhat dubious, um, but do you think anyone else kind of gets into the squad right now? I don't, um, especially based off that first half performance last week. I mean, I know we only got the one goal, but we were all over Colorado Springs. And most importantly, almost that entire half was played, almost that entire half of football, i.e. the 45 minutes, was played in Colorado Springs' half of the field, i.e. like our attacking half. So that we haven't seen in a really long time. Um, And to see that three days after we pressed so well against genuinely one of the best teams in the world, makes me very optimistic and it it speaks to something you were talking about a little bit earlier in the episode i think how we've kind of started to change the profile of central defender we have we've gone away from these like true central defenders to these more ball playing kind of wide center back maybe like defensive right back left back kind of guys um and i think that maybe is just kind of something about the way the game is moving you know defenders are more and more having to be technical players who have to do things that uh, you might have asked a midfielder to do 20 years ago. Look at John Stones, had a case for player of the season in the Premier League. He's a defender, but, I mean, he basically played as a midfielder for half the season and was incredible at it. So I think, I'm not trying to say that, like, Nate Miller is Pep Guardiola or anything, but I think that that is something you're seeing in the game, right? And so um, I really love the way we pressed in that game, and so I would love to see us keep that up at home, especially against a team like OC that you know is going to be coming into this game juiced up. Get on them early, press them, score an early goal if we can. Um, but yeah, I think this. I don't think anybody can get in this lineup because of how good they looked against Dortmund and then subsequently against Colorado Springs. They've had a week off. I'm sure they're raring to go. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I obviously know they'll see, like I said, Guzman, right? I think they, they are very similar. Um, but yeah, like I said, mentioned there, I mean, like the, the big old school kind of center back is being phased out. I mean, you look at, I mean, I don't want to go on about Harry Maguire at all. Um, well, at Man United brought in Lissandra Martinez, another kind of small center back. Um, and usually you kind of want these big guys coming in, but um, I think soccer in general is changing. Um, and even like I said, Cam Riley used to be a, a what, center midfielder and they kind of brought him back as a, a defender or a right back. And um, he's kind of done, done very well there. Um, and then obviously kind of players coming in and obviously we've had kind of Dharma's floating around up there. Mushkalusha's just coming as well. Um, Guido too. Um, do you think any of those guys are close to breaking into the starting lineup? No, not at the moment. Um, I feel like Guido is still not really firing on all cylinders this year. He's had one or two decent performances, but I don't really feel like we've seen anything kind of approaching the level that he was at last year where he was like a bonafide MVP candidate. So I don't see him getting in. Um, I think for Musha Galusa, it's still just a little too soon. Though he did look really good and, and promising. Um, and yeah, you know, Dom has scored. Um, you could be tempted to reward him for that. But I think, I don't know, man. Ever since we started going with Conway and Toomey up top, we looked really, really good. So um, I'm not saying that's the entirety of the reason, but... Uh, um, sometimes if it ain't broke don't fix it you know yeah I, I think we've kind of changed things around a lot and 
to be honest, I, I'm very confident that this could be the lineup for the next game. So maybe we do get one right. Um, but then maybe Nate brings in Mushkalusha and Damas as the front two and um, we, we get it wrong again. Um, but yeah, touching on Guido as well. I, I don't know. It's a weird one with him. I think if we went back to last season, if Guido was out for a game or wasn't starting, um, you kind of do get a bit worried. And you're like, ah, oh, maybe we won't do as well today. Obviously, we're missing Guido. But I think this year he's kind of lost that kind of, um, I guess, the the fact he's not indispensable to the team anymore. I mean, he's not played a lot of games. When he has played, he hasn't been kind of the standout guy anymore. Um, and I know when he did come on on the weekend, he was somewhat of a, in that two-meal role, the number 10 behind the striker. Um, and there was a point, I think, where he had to chase a long ball. And just he hasn't got the pace anymore. He, I mean... I don't know if he's really been truly a pacey guy, but kind of lost a foot race. Um, it almost looked like he lost his head a little bit as well. I was um, surprised nothing else came of that. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember that kind of later on in the second half. Uh, but yeah, I'm not I'm not sure, Guido. It's a strange one. I mean, we know we all know how good he is. We know how good he's been kind of for us previously. Um, but I hate to say it, but uh, to be honest, I don't... I, I think without Guido on the pitch, we're a better team than with him right now, which... Um, Honestly, I hate to say because I, I love him and obviously he's a... I mean, everyone loves Guido at San Diego Loyal. So it's a... I don't know. But whether kind of he needs someone to kind of boost him, kind of uh, kick up the ass, I don't know. Um, but something isn't quite right with him right now and uh, that's for sure. Um, but we move, will move into kind of the, the key matchups here and kind of, um, look at kind of the two matchups on the pitch together. Obviously, I know pretty much they will play kind of a similar two... Um, Colorado as far as kind of how they lined up formation wise um, although uh, I don't know I mean do you would you say the Colorado Colorado are better than Orange County do you think this would be a tougher matchup than the last two games um, if you'd have asked me a month ago I probably would have said that yes Colorado are easily a better team than Orange County but they've gone out and like not won a game since I would have said that and obviously two of those were losses to uh, San Diego loyal, but um, Orange County are flying, man. They've won six of their last seven, I think. Um, so I don't know. I don't think at this time you really could stay that. I think uh, Colorado Springs maybe have lost their way a little bit while Orange County are finding it. So, um, and when you've got Milan Oloski, you've always got a chance. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's. Uh, I think this game's definitely got more kind of riding on it. Um, that's for sure, and that's probably why I think it'll be a, a much, I guess, closer game. Although I will say, Colorado could have easily snuck a goal here and there if it wasn't for kind of Koke's, um amazing game he had. Um, looking at the kind of the lineups here, I mean, obviously, um, when you do get into it, you've got obviously the the midfield three will be kind of a, a very kind of key area there. Um, Obviously, uh, Toomey there and Conway kind of against those back two. Um, and then really, I think the main the main issue really is you've got Milan Oloski playing on the left-hand side where Perez will be playing right wing back. If Perez pushes too far on, you're going to have kind of Oloski in lots of space here if they do kind of leave him a little bit higher. And then you've got to be kind of wary of kind of Cam getting caught out and uh, the, all the spacing behind it. So that's the main bit I'm kind of wary of there. Um, as far as kind of other things with kind of the, I guess, the, the key somewhat storylines as well. Um, I've got on here as well. Let's see here. Um, can we keep another clean sheet? Obviously, now it's been um, a big part of how we've been playing recently. Uh, how do we fare as a team on form? I, I will say that Colorado were somewhat in form, but um, against OC, obviously, to, they've won six of the last seven. You, you can't really do much better than that. Um, can OC get revenge for their last game? And then do we keep Oloski quiet? Can we keep ahead? Which I know um, at times uh, we don't. And then do we press and start strong or do we kind of sit in and uh, grind out a win? Which, I mean, either way, if we get the win, I'm not complaining. Although I will say um, it does seem like we have been sitting in more recently um, and kind of grinding out games than we were kind of early on as far as kind of dominating the ball and, I guess, struggling to create chances. So it's kind of changed from more counter-attacking after than kind of keeping possession like we always have been. Um, but kind of what do you make of the key matchups? Kind of anything else to, to add there, kind of what to look out for in this game? Um, I just, I, I, if Adrian Perez can continue his fantastic form, um, I don't think he had a goal. I know he didn't have a goal. I don't think he had an assist either, um, against, uh, Colorado, but he had them on skates the whole time. Um, James Musa got taken off at halftime because he absolutely had no answers for Adrian Perez. Um, he was clearly playing with confidence. And so I'd like to see him keep doing that because when he, is on song he is a problem and um 
I think his willingness to just try things sometimes is just a breath of fresh air. So that's the last thing I would add, if, if he can just keep that great run of form going. Yeah, he's been, uh, I mean, obviously, like, he's, uh, I mean, I can't remember. Well, it was, it was Moussi, I mean, but he had his pants down the whole game. It was, uh, Perez was unreal. Um, and it makes it look easy at times as well. Um, I will, uh, I said, it's it's going to be a close one. I said, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this game. I don't think I've been up for a game um, this much as, like, kind of the last few games, too. Um, but, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, I know there was somewhat of a, a chippy game last time with OC. Um, but, uh, I mean, it, it's a derby game. It's a rivalry game. It's kind of what you should expect, um, which is good. I mean, you want that kind of uh, healthy competition uh, as long as your team wins in the end. So that's what counts, really. But then moving in, like I said, always to my favourite part here. We still haven't got one right. Um, so <sighs> it's getting frustrating, but I believe we'll get one soon. But Dylan, what are we going with prediction-wise for this week? Um, I actually did think about this ahead of time okay. today. Um, so I'm going to go 2-1 to one San Diego. I just I don't think we've ever really had like a proper blowout against Orange County. Even when we do, we like stop trying or something for the last 10 minutes or get a red card and then end up making a close game. So I think um, it'll be a, a hard fought two to one win um, for goal scorers. I will go uh, Perez and um, Domus off the bench again. And then Oloski, obviously for uh, actually, no, I take that back. We'll keep Oloski quiet. Thomas Among is obviously going to score at Torero stadium. So he'll be the one goal for Orange County. Yeah, no, we've not, men we've not mentioned Among at all yet. I know he hasn't played too much for them. Um, I will say, if you went with the Losky, you could have said either one, so that would have given you um, two for the price of one. Well, I'll there. let you have that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm actually going to go with a clean sheet for us. I was um, I was debate my top two choices were either three two or two nil. I'm going to go two nil. Um, obviously, OC only scored one goal versus New Mexico last week, um, so uh, I, they've been doing better recently. But I think we uh, we can hold out for a clean sheet. So I'm going to go two nil. Um, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Conway and then I'm gonna go with a we'll go with Charlie Adams um, either a free kick or definitely from outside the box I think um, but uh, I'm I'm liking the fact we've got more players now who can score some goals and I would kind of I think last week we said that Corona wasn't really a player who got many goals or assists and then he uh, he absolutely bangs that one on the weekend um, so uh, we'll see there but I'm I'm happy with two nil um, although uh, if we get if we get a three two win I'll uh, take half a point there. Um, but Dylan, anything else to uh, say before we wrap things up here? No, not really. I uh, It's always fun to play Orange County, um, especially because in the first, well, I guess this is the fourth season of San Diego Loyal, but this is the third season we've been able to go to games. Um, and in the first season, we played Orange County literally like four or five times. And then the second season, we like last season, we played them three times. And so this is it's weird only playing them twice this year. So it gets me extra amped for it. I, I want to not... I want to win these games so I don't have to like worry about taking flack for it. I mean, yeah, we we what we drew with Phoenix and beat them, so we haven't we haven't lost to Phoenix, and hopefully we can go away without losing too well. See, so yeah, I'll be uh, happy with the how the rivalries have gone this season. Um, but that being be things there, we'll have obviously another locals last call after this game here, and then another bumps breakdown going into next week, possibly uh, a double header for the Memphis and uh, who was that second game against? We have got Memphis midweek next week, um, and then on the. Is it the Sunday we have? It's Memphis. Oh, no. It's, so it's Orange County on Saturday and then Luden, Loudon on Wednesday the 9th and then uh, Memphis on Saturday the 12th. Perfect. So three three games in a week all at home as well. So It'll be fun. Yeah. Can't, uh, can't get much, much more than that, but hopefully, obviously, three good results, three good performances. Um, but again, thanks for listening or watching. I'll see you guys very soon.